All right, we're back into the campaign mode. Um, as I was telling my live audience just a second ago, I was unable to figure out why it keeps not, not scoring it properly. So um, I'm going to keep doing some research on that and try to figure out why it insists on not giving me the score of 100 like we're supposed to get. It worked just fine on our first mission, but there's something wrong with the subsequent missions. That's Well, I guess that might make sense to actually go check the first mission and see if, if there's anything different about that. I'll try to remember to do that. We're going to go ahead and skip this for now because we need to get to pattern practice. I guess it's not the data entry. It's not the data entry. We're doing pattern practice today. So uh, for those of you who have not seen this series and have not seen this uh, flight school campaign before, it is the flight. It is a flight school that I've developed for the F-18 Hornet in DCS World. Uh, we start out doing some basic navigation stuff and then we move on to air to ground and then air to air and then eventually move into a carrier operations block where you learn how to interact with the carrier and do a bunch of other stuff. Now, uh, one of the one of the things that makes this flight school campaign a little bit different from just the basic training missions is, is that you're doing full missions every time you do it. There's a full list of things you have to get done. It isn't, it isn't just dropping you into whatever thing you're trying to do and then you're, you teleport out and you don't really have any context for what you're doing. And it forces you to do a case one carrier landing even at the airfield the entire time so that by the time you get out to the carrier, you've done the pattern so much it's second nature and all you have to really focus on is now, now I'm just doing it on a carrier instead of at an airfield. So this mission that we're doing right now is going to teach the case one carrier pattern. Let's go ahead, hop in and see how it goes. And I definitely need the- Welcome to your first day of training. In general, you will have two lessons per day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, with the occasional night flight thrown in for the experience. In this morning's lesson, we're going to practice a modified version of the landing pattern for the Hornet. Be advised that this is not the typical landing procedure when returning from a mission, but is rather the recovery procedure from a missed landing attempt on the carrier, whether from being told to go around, wave off, or touching down on the deck, but missing the arresting wires. Need my throttle. Kind of hard to do that without. For today's training, Vaziani has been closed to traffic, so we can focus on just flying a proper pattern. So no radio calls will be required. Go ahead and get the aircraft started, and then taxi to the right and approach the active runway. Stop just before the runway threshold for further instructions. All right. We'll fast forward through the startup process because that's kind of boring and it takes a while. Um, if you're interested in manually starting, the first lesson in this is taking you all the way through a quick start procedure. So let me recenter my my view here. So that hopefully it doesn't move around so much. All right, let's go ahead and well, first and foremost, I'm gonna take a second on my own to set up my HSI to I don't remember I don't remember what the course line is. Oh, wait, the need board should have it. Vatiani, uh, runway 135. So, tack in, 22, x-ray, on, and then we can, uh, and then we can course to 135. Trying okay, to do things while we're moving, here. you're not supposed to do that, but it's fine. Before we get started, we need to be able to gauge our distance from the ground very accurately. So let's change our altimeter to radar mode by flipping the switch just below the UFC from Barrow to RDR. Understand that this is still just a rough estimate, as the ground will be rolling up and down below you. But we need AGL references, and the radar altimeter is the only way to do that. The sequence of events for the pattern will be as follows. Take off from the runway as we did in the last lesson using full mill power. This simulates using full thrust to recover from a failed carrier landing attempt. Climb to an altitude of 600 foot AGL and bring your airspeed to around 350 knots. At about a mile from the airfield, reduce throttle to idle and execute a steep turn to the left. Keep the velocity vector on the horizon and keep your G-meter between 2.5 and 3 G. That's the first, part I struggle with, is the, that initial G, the initial the turn of the turn. G's there. About halfway through the turn, your airspeed should be below 250 knots, so lower your landing gear and flaps. 
Once you reach a heading of 310, level off and work on getting your velocity oh, vector aligned with the E bracket, just like we did for landing in the last lesson. Remember to keep the velocity vector on the horizon with pitch trim and bring the E bracket down to it with oh, throttle wait. adjustments. The E bracket chases the velocity vector, not the other way around. I'll notify you when it's time to turn for your final approach. Just focus on getting on the proper downwind and setting up your aircraft for landing. Okay, when you're ready, taxi out onto the runway and begin your takeoff. All right, so the purpose of this lesson is to teach you the case, uh, case one carrier recovery procedure um, so that you know how to do it for all the subsequent missions that we're going to be doing that you're going to do here. So this introduces you to that concept and then it's up to you to continue, figure, continue doing it. All right, we're trying to get up to 600 feet. It's 800 feet for the normal recovery, but we're practicing. We're, we're doing. We're basically doing the uh, go-around procedure, which has you at 600 feet. So that's why it's different. You're about a mile from the runway, so go ahead and reduce throttle to idle and execute a steep left turn. Man, I forgot. Going I, back sharply on the stick, I doing I your best my, to keep the velocity. The feeling's a little bit different because I adjusted my curves for when you're we were doing aerial refueling three practice. Gs, followed by a gradual reduction in stick pressure to allow the G's to slowly reduce. You should be about halfway through your turn at this point. Don't forget to lower your flaps and landing gear once your airspeed is below 250 knots. Level out at a heading of 310 and get your aircraft stabilized with the velocity vector on the horizon. Yeah, I screwed that apart. Fortunately, it's usually recoverable if you... Part of so it was just I got to get used to the new. I, I, I changed the curves for my, for my the e down to it pitch and yaw or my pitch and roll Try to stay around because I was having a hard time controlling it, even with the curves that I had uh, when I was doing my refueling practice. So I, I had to adjust it. But now the feeling is a little bit different for this now. So I got to get used to having to pull harder on the stick to get the same inputs I'm used to. Because you know, for precision flying, you really need a lot of leeway in the way in how much you can move the stick before it starts doing something. Now we're not going to test these to see if if you, uh, we're not going to test these to see about making sure about whether they point, fail or not because I've already landing, tested that. So be able to see I'm just this is purely ship. testing advancing this through the campaign. This is where you would normally begin a 30 degree descending turn to the left. But if you need a bit more wiggle room, feel free to continue further out before you begin. Once you start turning, add some power to compensate for the loss of lift and try to keep the velocity vector just below the horizon. Remember that the stick should only be used for roll adjustments. Pitch is controlled with the throttle during landing. Keep your eyes fixed on the HUD for the first 90 degrees of the turn. You should be about halfway through your turn by now. So take a quick peek at the runway and start making adjustments to line up with the center line. Once you're lined up, focus on placing your velocity vector and E bracket on the runway numbers. You should be making constant throttle adjustments all the way to touchdown to keep the velocity vector on the sweet spot. If your throttle hand stops moving, you're doing it wrong. You should be adjusting the range of throttle motion for or aft depending on whether you need to move the velocity vector up or down. Failure to keep the throttle moving will likely result in getting behind the aircraft, a bad situation. For the purposes of this lesson, a good landing is anything close to the numbers. Good job. If you'd All like right. to keep practicing, add full afterburner to shabby. repeat the process. Try to slow down Otherwise, and catch this first taxiway. Otherwise, exit the next again. appropriate taxiway to end the lesson. Speed breakout. Oh, why? I didn't even hit that hard. Well, I guess the crew chief is going to be a little bit mad because we damaged the plane, but, well, it is Hope a you got it is. some good practice out there. 
Go ahead and taxi back to parking spot one and shut down the aircraft. The lesson will end when you're parked in the correct spot and the aircraft is off. And we can uh, kind of zoom through this. Do, do, do. Get over to the parking spot. The auto off procedure should work just fine as well, so. Yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't feel like we landed that hard, so. Check gear, check gear. Check gear. Right. Check here, check here. Here. Auto off procedure, let that go. And that will do it for today's flight. Uh, since check we have here, a little bit of extra here. time at the end of this, we'll go ahead and check the uh, first mission and see if we can identify That's it for this what the issue was. See you back here. So we should be able to quit and then hit end mission. And ideally it's supposed to ad advance us to the next one. But yeah, I have something that's causing the scoring to not work. So... Um, Let's cancel that. We'll go into the mission editor. We'll open up the first mission, and let me get my let me get this stuff out of the way. And I just want to see if there's something that I'm missing here because, as you can see, the I have a min score here, fifty. If it's uh, if it's oh no, player scores less. Oh, this is the wrong. Huh. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um. So this one, the reason why this is working is because I have the wrong, I have the wrong thing here. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do some more research. If you happen to know why this is, why it's not working, because what I'm trying to get to is, is I'm trying to get to, I, I don't want you to, I don't want it to send you back a mission. And with the way that they decided to do the mission editor, for some reason they decided that if you didn't score at least a 50, if you score less than a 50, it actually sends you back a mission. And I, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to make you guys do that. I don't want it to work that way. So what I'm trying to get to is if your mission score is lower than 50, I want it to automatically make the mission score 50. Now, honestly, it would be nice if I could just add a thing in here that sets the mission score, but I don't think there's a way to do that. I don't think there's a way to actually just say, make the, make the score 50. Um... But, but then again, like, how did I set the how did I set the score before oh, with the flag? So okay, maybe there's a hmm. Huh. Okay, so I guess if I did. So maybe I could just add a random flag or add a certain a flag number on all of these. Maybe I could do like flag nine, add a flag 9,000 that sets the score to 50 automatically. I think that's probably what I need to do. I think that's probably what I need to do. So set flag value 9,000. And then if I change this, rather than having it be like this, I can say, all right, so min score, we can say, Flag va flag value is true, right? Flag equals, okay. So let's see, flag equals flag 9,000 equals one. Score, okay. So I think if I take this, if I think, I think if I take this here and I basically just make it to where I add a flat set flag value 9,000 to one, and then that just automatically sets your score to a minimum score of 50. Then if you finish the mission and you get all the way down to flag value 99, 99, and that becomes true, then you get the 100 and that advances you to the next thing. So, okay. 
I think that's I think that's what we need to do to fix the mission here. Um, that means that I'm going to have to sit down um, off camera and go update all of my missions to add that in there. But ideally, that will fix the problem and make it so that you never have to go back a mission. As long as you complete the mission, you move on to the next step. And you also don't get stuck in this weird loop where it won't advance the mission because of whatever that was. It sticks that keeps you stuck if, at a score of 50, even though I had it set a different way but it doesn't matter i'll manually set the scores that way i don't have to worry about it being a problem so anyways uh that's going to go ahead and do it for today's dcs world episode i'll try to make sure and it's also that's also for the week uh so i'll try to remember to get some more stuff done um well i mean i guess for the recording for the people who are watching this as a recording you are not going to get this until monday i think so uh i don't know saturday yeah no i think i'll publish it on saturday fine anyways we'll do the we'll get through the weekend and hopefully over the weekend, I'll have some time to sit down and update all of these. And then I will try to fly through all of these and actually complete them, complete them as they're supposed to be completed. So anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to click the like button. Uh, help us reach 10,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. You can join as a member for early access to videos, among other perks. Or you can just leave YouTube's version of a tip with the thanks button. Again, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to come back for the next episode. And I'll see you then.